I've got Admiral Anderson on the QEC. Patching him through to you now. Hey, Hill. Hill here. Gaming. Welcome back to more modded Mass Effect 3. This is Hill. We're here at the Citadel. And now it's time for a break in the action. We're headed to the personal apartment which will launch the Citadel DLC. Admiral, how are you holding up? Day by day, Commander. Yeah. Hackett sent me a message about this apartment. I want you to have it. Take it off my hands. Are you serious? You need a place that's yours. Somewhere to recharge, clear your head. Kaylee wanted us to settle down there. Thing is, the longer I'm on Earth, the less I want to leave. And I want as few loose ends out there as possible. Like I said, you'd be doing me a favor. Well, thank you. That's very generous. It's practical. We need you in the best shape possible. Rested. Focused. If you say so. Thank you. And make yourself at home, damn it. It's yours now. I'm sure I can manage. Okay, good. Been meaning to do that for a while. I'll talk to you soon. It's a beautiful home. And I thought this was uh, the right time to take a break from the battle with the Reapers. We have now met all of the, um, I guess, cast members that are going to be a part of the story with the Quarians that we met in our last episode. So now it won't seem out of place if they appear here in the apartment. Which brings up an interesting question because this... DLC starts earlier on before you meet some of these people and I wonder if they included them in the DLC or if they just won't be present I, I don't know I haven't played enough with Citadel DLC to even know maybe some of you do and would like to leave some comments alright take care be careful out there Anderson you too Shepard Okay, explore the apartment. Now, this is luxury here, people, at its finest. This is nice. And what have we got here? Notes for Anderson Biography. A brand new ship. My ship. I've received a new message. You don't forget that moment. The first time you're standing there. The whole crew looking to you for direction. Unforgettable. I'd led men and women before that. Seen a lot of combat already. Always managed to find my way home in one piece. To do that a few times, you begin to think you know better than the next guy. Maybe you do, I don't know. But if you're lucky, really lucky, you find yourself on a good ship, in front of a good crew. A crew you can trust with your life. Gifted. Disciplined. Brave. All of them, eager to set sail into the endless black ocean. I still remember my exo asking what my orders were. Shepard, I said, let's see what we can find. Hmm. All right, stereo control. What music do we have? No, thank you. It's that same music. All right, we've got a message coming in, but my goal here is to explore the apartment. Look at this kitchen. Nice. I 
We seem to be getting closer to the the Sorry, message though. Talk about I mean, it sounds like the the alert is coming here from behind this painting. Okay, that's stereo again. Uh, let's go through here, then we'll go upstairs. Look at this. Oh, there's the. That's where it's coming from. That desk. No, no, it's fine. I got a few minutes. First contact war. And let's look at this interview. A few months ago, I had a chance to sit oh, it's down with one of Earth's most decorated soldiers, Admiral David Anderson. He was kind enough to answer my questions and talk about his career. Today, the Admiral is on Earth, leading the defense of our home against the Reapers. We have no communication with him or any soldiers on Earth, but we can't forget what they're doing for us. Tonight's show is dedicated to all of the soldiers out there, fighting and dying to keep us safe. Admiral Anderson, today marks the 30th anniversary of the N7 program. Can you describe your first day of training in this now famous program? The Interplanetary Combatives Training Program is all business from day one. How so? We're given basic gear then separated and stranded on an asteroid with no nav data. The test ends when the last person runs out of oxygen. Oh, that's so pleasant. Daunting. What happens to the ones who run out of air first? Out of the program. The best N7s can survive alone, but work together to survive even longer. Uh, that's very impressive, Admiral. Deep space survival training. Uh, that has to be uh, so difficult. All of it would take such strength of character. Well, just plain strength. But then, you seem like a strong person. I'm sorry. Is there a question in there? Uh, well, does the program make the man? Or do you think you were born for this? It's a bit of both, I suppose. Every soldier reaches a point in their career, sometimes more than once, when they are asked to give more than they ever thought they could. That moment is the test. I've seen men and women, almost sure to fail, persevere long past the point of breaking. That experience changes them. Others, with all the gifts and abilities, fail in that moment. Sometimes they pick themselves up and carry on. Sometimes they're just done. What about you? What was your moment? I've had a few. 
None of which I'd like to share. But uh, I think the toughest tests are still ahead of me. What makes you say that? Call it a hunch. Soldier's intuition? Something like that. Do you trust your intuition? I mean, do you follow your heart over your mind? <laughs> well, <laughs> it depends on the day. No, I... I suppose if I were to be honest, I do trust my instincts. The problem is... War isn't orderly. And the enemy is never predictable. Even the most experienced veteran is going to find themselves in situations they haven't trained for. In those instances, and there's more than I'd like to admit, your instincts are the only thing keeping you alive. That, and the men and women you're fighting beside. But soldiers are only as good as their leader, isn't that true? Yeah. A good leader can make an okay squad great. A bad leader, well, war tends to make examples of them. Mm. What makes a good leader, then? Mm. A good leader is someone who values the life of his men over the success of the mission, but understands that sometimes the cost of failing a mission is higher than the cost of losing those men. That's a terrible line to have to walk. Yes, it is. But war is a terrible thing. Thank you for your time, Admiral. Thank you. The remainder of this interview was to take a more personal look at Admiral Anderson's life. It wasn't finished when the Reapers invaded. We can only hope that the Admiral and the soldiers under his command survive to tell us the rest of their stories. I'm Kalisa Algelani. Thank you for watching. Hmm, it's too bad there wasn't a real video to go along with that. All right. <clears throat> I'm sure this chiming is getting on your nerves like it is on mine. What? What? Okay, dinner at Sushi Place on me. I've got a few things I wanted to go over with you. With the Normandy and Dry Dock, I figured we could meet up at that... Ruche Sushi? <laughs> I'm, I'm butchering. But the Sushi Place down in the wards, I hear it's the best. Alright, thank you. Thank you, that's very nice. So yes, we're officially on shore leave. Let's see, what is this here? Oh, I can actually... Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? So, <laughs> you can actually customize these rooms? Okay, and the reason I'm taking so much time with this, people, is because I've only played this DLC once. Yes, that's right. Only once. Look at these books. Oh my goodness. Wow, these are actually books. Look at... Okay, anyway, I'm tripping. Um, uh, I've only played this once, so these audio recordings and stuff, I don't think I even listened to when I played the DLC the first time, so... We're listening to them now. So here's our, I don't even know what you would call this room. Because it seems like they've got a lot of gambling stuff going on. Anyhow, okay, so that was the kitchen. 
we've got another little lounge area back here. Look at this big screen TV. Wow, nice. Got another pad here. Embarrassing moment? I've got more of those than anyone will ever know. Only way to learn something. But if I had to pick one to share, I had just gotten promoted to N7. Full of myself. King of the castle. Found myself buying drinks for undesirables in some rundown bar in the wards. They toasted my recent promotion. Hell, they would have toasted Batarian slavers if it had got them more drinks. About the time my money ran out, my new friends turned on me. I was outnumbered. Things didn't look good. My plan to get out of there involved lots of punching. Well, that worked for a while. Then a table hit me. Or I fell down. When I came to, I saw a Solarian putting the rest of the troublemakers down. A Solarian? Moved like a damn cat, I swear. When everybody was out cold. Or running. He walked over and helped me up. N7, he asked. Yes, sir, I replied. He looked over my collection of unconscious friends, nodding. Not bad, human, he said. Then he walked away. I had met my first specter. Mm -hmm. an important lesson that day. No matter how good you think you are, there's always somebody quicker, faster, and a hell of a lot smarter than you just around the corner. That little lesson's kept me alive more than once since then. All right, so we're proceeding to the upstairs area. Some more stereo controls. Just a nice socialization balcony here, because this this thing is just set up for party parties. It looks like. I mean, this is really nice. Like people can just stand up here and talk and drink and whatnot, and look down on the lounge area down there. Wow. And here is the bedroom. Very sparse. I guess if I use the customization options, I might be able to add things in here. Oh my goodness, look at this. Seriously. Seriously. What is this the... This is just a hot tub, I guess. Not, not a bathtub. Hot tub. I'm sure Shepard could certainly use that. After all the fighting and stuff that he's done. Nice toilet there. Look at this. Look at the luxury. Wow. And we've got in here... Oh! Our armor locker and our weapons bench. Nice. In the bedroom. Where else could you... Or should you put such things? Okay, another one. There is a range. That was what I was worried about. <clears throat> have okay. to stand close so, to it. Tombstone data. Admiral David Edward Anderson. Not sure why anybody would be interested, but thanks for asking. Um, I was born in London. Oh. June 8th, 2137. I bet nobody knew Plus that. Okay, so yeah, you have to stand somewhere in range of these recordings. I just can't keep walking around. All right, here's another one. The Turians. <clears throat> mm, well, I might not always see eye to eye with the politics of the individual, but I have a great respect for the Turian military. Any Alliance soldier lucky enough to take part in their training programs will certainly be better for it. Their precision, skill, and discipline together in a way that's second to none. Not that I'm faulting our own people or training. It's just that after fighting Torians in the first contact war, 
ask how the platoon I commanded was trounced in his strategy game. Humbly. But I've used what I learned that day many times. The Xenophobes will have their say. But I think it's vital that we do more of this kind of cross-species training. There you go. <laughs> and if you do find General Oryx, let me know. I owe him money. <laughs> okay, I think we're near the end of our upstairs tour. Here's another. This, I guess this is the guest room, guest bathroom with a normal shower. I think they have... No, I think I'm getting these things confused. I wanted to say that they have sonic showers, but I think that's Star Trek. So, maybe they do use water here. I don't know. <laughs> Uh-oh, here's another one. You asked me to talk about the SSV Normandy. The Normandy SR-1. As commander of the Tokyo, I was consulted on the Normandy's design and on board for her initial training exercises. The average person probably doesn't know that the Normandy was a joint project with the Torians. Acting CEO, Eli Zander, was no diplomat. She ran out of patience with Torian posturing and politicking during construction. The chief architect of the Drive Corps, Octavio Tatum, and his team of Torian engineers were in the CIC for final training exercises. Tempers flared when Xander pushed the limits of the stealth system, waiting to vent the IES well past what Tatum was comfortable with. I tried to calm the situation, but it still ended with the Turian scientists in shackles and a human Turian fist fight at Cora's den later. Huh. Funny now, when I first laid eyes on the Normandy, she was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Day after that training run, Admiral Wright found me on the bridge. She's yours, he said. Can't trust her to Xander. Send me a list of crew from the Tokyo you'd like, and prep for your first mission. Short command, thanks to Saren. Still, one of the highlights of a long career. Hmm. All right. So, yeah, here's the other staircase on this side of the apartment. And there's a downstairs half bath. So, what do we have, like two and a half baths right now? Oh, look! Oh, this is another guest bedroom. I was surprised. I thought this was going to be a, uh, a gym. Is there a gym? No, this is just a big walk-in closet. Man, wouldn't you love to live here? Okay, one more. Okay. I have your new questions here. As a leader, do I ever feel that the end justify the means? Spirit of law over word of law. I'm not going to touch that with a ten-foot pole, but I think I know what you're after. You're referring to the way I, um arranged to have the Normandy released to Commander Shepard before the Battle of the Citadel. I'm not sure how valuable hindsight is to the military. Obviously, it worked out for the best. Without the Normandy and Commander Shepard free to do what they needed to do, what we needed them to do, Saren might have taken the Citadel. I think it's clear what a different galaxy this would be if that had happened. I did what I had to. If I had been wrong, I would have gladly accepted the repercussions. The real trick is... Never being wrong. <laughs> if you're looking for more action and less philosophy in these notes, let me know. <laughs> All right, so we get I'm she uh, not Shepard, but um, Anderson's background here in his apartment. Very interesting. Very interesting stuff. All right, is there anything here on the? There is. Okay, it looks like there's one more. You never asked me. suffer. But that's reality. And 
Okay, that should be the last of the Anderson Chronicles here. So we learned a bit about him. You know, just as I was listening to that, I'm watching these um, cars, cars in quotation marks, flying by. The noise. I guess you get used to it, though. I think I would have a problem with this, like sleeping and... I, I suppose the TV would drown it out a little bit, but that's annoying. That is really annoying, but, you know, some people can deal with stuff like that. Like, you know, people that can have homes and apartments right near railroad tracks and whatnot, and the trains come rumbling through. You know, some people can deal with that. Because I, I once looked at an apartment. I, I lived in New York a long time ago. It was right near the, the subway line. And when the train came through, the entire building shook. I mean, I immediately knew at that point that I couldn't live there. But there are people living there. So some people can deal with things like that. All right. And speaking of dealing, in our next episode, it's time for sushi. This is Hill. And I'm out.